Dr Aylward. Uh, uh, I'd just like to start, uh, I couldn't make some comment about uh, the cinema in, in Galway because every, every, every person has spoken there. So to me it looked like a calamity of errors from 2006 to 2018 and uh, I'm not going to go over it all again because you have answered enough questions on it but I can't understand how professional people were brought in in four site investigations. You had architects, you had engineers, you had everything and yet you had, you had ground conditions seem to be the problem. Uh, you had water logging, uh, uh, ground and lands were carried out, and then you had a property next door was damaged, which had to be rebuilt. And, I mean, to me, this is laughable, like, you know. Who, where's the professional people involved here that are supposed to be, uh, have their degrees and their, their credits to them that go in and do this site of the and then this happens? Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't that up, you know? Uh, just poor project management. Uh, and who's paying for it? Taxpayer, 8.4 million. Gone down the, gone down. I wouldn't say it's gone down to Swanee because we have at least we have a cinema there. Mm-hmm. And it took a private operator then to come in to finish the project. So there's question marks all around here. And thanks to Couture Rodder and Shalom for his an analysis of here today and, and what was presented. It just shows us that there's something seriously wrong. And why are there not better systems in place to stop this happening and to take it, uh, what, 12 years? to come to a conclusion. Can you just give me, that's just an over, an over, a break. Say, I would say, Deputy, actually, just in defence of the, of the department, as I said earlier, there were 42 projects, actually, that were signed off on in that, that year, 2006. Uh, 40 of those were delivered, actually, and delivered on time within budget. That doesn't make this so one right. It doesn't make this one right. You're absolutely correct. But I just want to just put a bit of context. We also delivered the Wexford Opera House, which is a magnificent facility around that time. Uh, again on time and under budget um, so it's not all bad news but however I, I do absolutely share your concerns about this. I can't answer for the professional bodies that, that do surveys and why these surveys don't throw up things. I, I would say however um, when you're building on a brownfield site in a medieval quarter uh, of Galway there is always a risk and perhaps we should have we should have asked those questions about the area in question, and I suppose the site hadn't been purchased, I don't think, when we actually, when we agreed the grant, but when you're building on those kind of sites where there's archaeology, where you're beside the river, where there's floods, where there's uh, older buildings next door, there's always a risk, and with the best will in the world, I'm not sure that... That, that was professional uh, people are brought in for, though, to, 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 uh, to counteract what we're talking about, exactly what you're explaining. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So there was a really kind of recession as well. Yeah, of course the, the recession as well played played did play a major part. And so I think a part. So perhaps. Perhaps. Oh, sorry. That was your part. Yeah, what was my <laughs> <laughs> I spent too much. So so is, we all we all parted, you know. So is, uh, we all didn't party, no, we didn't. We did not. <laughs> well some people did. Some, some people did. I know I didn't part in much of it earlier. Uh, so is, uh, anyway, I'm going away from over at here. Mm. So is, uh, what do, they were a private company, non profitable. Who what was the company made of? Who were they? Were they business people? You know, were a few people came together and started a project or had they professionalism? Were they Joe Soaps? I, I certainly think there was, you know, a well-known figure in Irish f- film, uh, a great enthusiast uh, who promoted the project, um, which, and I think it probably be safe to say, it wouldn't be there uh, uh, without her. And then there was a board put in place uh, to govern it with, with relevant skills on the board. But it is clear that it wasn't sufficient to deliver a project of this complexity, and I think that's, that's, that's the lesson that the department has learned. They went into liquidation then, so are they debts left behind for someone else to carry? Or uh, are they clear? Uh, you know, when you go into liquidation, it's usually for a reason for going into liquidation. The, the money's gone and you owe money, and you know, so are the other hangovers left after the company? Yeah, we're not, we're not privy to, to their, uh, you know, what their position is. Is I mean there may be a standing action. I think there was an issue around a bond and I, and a court uh, uh, action re- regarding a bond. So 
Could, could I suppose just say, Deputy, that since I mean, 2006 is 12 years ago when this project was first uh, mooted. Um, a lot has happened in terms of the public spending code since, and a lot has changed in terms of the kind of conditions we have on projects. So now projects applying for capital grants are expected to be at a much more advanced stage with well-developed business cases and budget plans, but most crucially they're expected to have their their funding in place before an offer is made, and that wasn't the case in this project. And as we saw, the pro when we asked them to, to raise the funds, the, the funds didn't appear. Okay, can I move on to more good news? Uh, the National Development Plan and the spend on heritage and culture in this country for the next 10 years. I think you said something point one, point something billion. Is that what you said? Uh, I just want to, how's that going for you, Sess? Um, so, you know, I particularly speak here, because I'm from Carroll, Kilkenny, Kilkenny in particular, uh, we have very culture and heritage city down there, and uh, we have the headquarters and all. So I'm just wondering, what way, do you, what way is it going to be assessed? Is the money going to be spent on a regional basis? You know, is it going to be divided regionally, or is it whichever projects come up? front, or is it going to be built, uh, spent on a county basis, or even on a, on a city basis, or town basis? Uh, what way are you going to analyse the, the spend? It was very welcome, that kind of spend, in our heritage and the future. I'm just wondering how the projects are going to come on stream. I think, Deputy, the, the Minister is going to launch that, that element of the NDP, our element of the NDP, in the coming weeks, where we'll have more detail. But certainly, we will have schemes, and we've seen, we opened up this um, scheme last year, the Arts cap Capital Scheme, 2016, yeah. 2016, which was in 2016, which was about funding capital development for arts f facilities regionally, which has proved highly successful, <coughs> actually. Um, and we're going to build on that, I think, from your perspective, uh, that will be of interest. And the whole idea of that is to, and it's kind of building on the experience of 2016, the kind of level of participation, how culture is a safe space for people to engage, um, recognising all of that, putting money into regional into regional cultural facilities is going to be a key element yeah, of the programme. That's what I'm trying to ask, will you balance the region, counties, you know, will it be a balance that so much must go everywhere, so everyone is shared out, you know, or, you know, or some people, mm -hmm. going, some counties going to be ahead, or some some projects going to be ahead of others, or do you look at it on a regional basis and, and, and sort that's to spread all over the whole 26 counties. We have to develop out the schemes. We haven't developed out the schemes as yet. Um, we certainly, the normal way we would do it is we would launch a scheme. We generally tend to work through the local authorities, and that has been most successful. And we ask the local authorities to come up with projects. The regional authorities will have a role as well. Yeah, and the regional authorities will have a role yet. So I, I couldn't tell you just yet exactly how the schemes will operate, but suffice it to say, there is, all, there will be funding for regional development. It's all a good spit. And Kilkenny, you've got Carlo Visual and you've got Kilkenny. Yes, Butler I Gallery have. is still on our list. Sorry. Good. So. Good projects. Uh, just want to ask quickly and move on to programme expenditure. North South cooperation and the money being spent uh, 26.6 million, is it here? Uh, 41.6 million. Uh, um, what, how, what's the department supervisory role in relation to these bodies, uh, or how is that money spent? There's a lot of money that's been spent, and where has the money come from first? Uh, where has it been funded from? And then how has it been spent, and what way has it been spent north, south? It sounds good, uh, cooperation. And who supervises it, and what bodies are supervising? So there's on Forest Changa, which, which comprises uh, Forest Nigelga and the Ulster Scots Agency, and we fund that we fund that with Northern Ireland, with our counterparts in Northern Ireland, for uh, uh, for Snigelga, we do 75% of the funding in Northern Ireland does 25%, and for the Ulster Scots, it's the other way around. We do 25% and they do 75%. What are the projects there are, are we speaking of for that kind of money? I mean, there must be a lot of projects uh, there under that, well, with that kind for, of money being spent. On First Chang is doing very valuable work in terms of promoting the Irish language um, across the country, actually. Um, and then we have Waterways Ireland, um, which is developing the canals across the border and in Dublin. Um, the canal. So if I just give you a list of the kind of things that, say, First Nigelga is doing, um, they're developing bilingual information packs for community centres and public services, signage packs for service providers in the language in language planning areas, and in Gaelic service time, towns and Irish, Irish language networks. Um, they're transcribing additional spoken material um, in, into, they're creating dictionaries, awareness packs, um, a communications ca campaign to increase public awareness in regard to the role, vision and work of the agency, signage for Irish language in Gaeltuk areas, um, and also they're overseeing uh, Blaine Gaelga this year. So we provide them with, with the money, 450,000 for The money that's coming from the, the funding, is, is that yes. co-funded by, is the British government yes. co-funded? In the North, yes. The so North. So what we North have North here, North what exactly. we have here, there's double the amount of money available because the British government, I presume, are matching, is it? No, this is the entire fund. Oh, this is the entire funding. 
So, it's, um, I, I think it represents, in the case of uh, Forest Nogalia, 75% of their spend, and for Ulster Scots, 25%. So there is further matching, uh, matching funding. They wouldn't be spending as much on the north because Ulster Scots Agency is a smaller agency than Forest Nogalia. Is it hard to supervise or request this cross power bother and to make sure those getting value for money and to oversight? And well, we manage it. it, it the, I mean, we have a structure with the north, but, but we manage it in the same way also that we manage all of the other agencies. We have performance agreements. We have... Um, quarterly monitoring meetings, we look at their annual reports and accounts, um, we monitor their, so for example, actually this year we're doing an exercise to monitor compliance by all the bodies in the department with the public, with the, um, the uh, I've forgotten, the code of practice for the, for the governance of state bodies in 2016. So... I move on to the, the raised bog plate. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> Uh, the raised bog turf cutting, um, is that compensation for the rules that were brought in by DU that they couldn't raise bogs cannot be troubled? Is that what that scheme is about? Is, is compensation for people that can't cut turf it is. and are getting funding instead or uh, it compensation is. instead granted? And is. how long is that going to last? For, or, They're 15 year compensation compensation schemes. And what way is it? Uh, what way is, is, or one off is, payments. One off payments. Yeah. Uh, or a 15 year comp annual compensation. And how do, you, how do you come at an agreed amount? Uh, you know, say I'm cutting tough and my grandfather's cutting tough and my, my father cut tough. How do you analyse, how do you actually put a price on, on the compensation? It's, 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 a, it's, a, um, it's a standard rate. Um, so it offers 1500 per annum, index linked over 15 years, together with a once off incentive payment of 500 euros. And, and people are refusing to cooperate on this because I know some tough cutters will not cooperate and they want to do the traditional thing, cut tough. Uh, are they breaking the law now? Look, we, we've come a long way on this. It's a very, very difficult and a very sensitive and complex issue. We've come a long way. We have, as I mentioned in the figures earlier, we have an enormous number of turf cutters who actually have come on board um, and we're still dealing with with others, you know, but, but we're almost there in the raised box. Last question I just wanted to ask you about the Cork Offence Centre. Um, it's, I was just reading through there, there seem to be question marks down over the Cork Offence Centre too. Monies that were supposed to be given haven't been drawn down. What is the situation at the Cork Offence Centre? What's it about? I don't understand fully why it's at a standstill and why no monies have been drawn down. And what is the Cork Offence Centre anyway? Can you explain it to me? So Cork City Council is the project promoter, so the, the proposal is to build a big event centre um, in the city centre, which would be a huge addition to Cork City. Um, it's included in the National Development Plan as a commitment. Um, the department had a commitment for, I think, uh, 12, 12 million. Um, now, Cork City is the lead developer in the project, Cork City Council. We had given a commitment to fund it to the tune of 10, 12 million. The a tender process um, was undertaken. What's the cost overall? Um, about 80 million overall. So you're going 10%. So, yeah, yeah. So Cork City Council then came back and said there was an, with an additional funding request of a further 10 million from the department. Uh, they did a cost benefit analysis on that, um, which went to our colleagues in Deeper. There were some queries over that. <coughs> They've now come back with a revised cost benefit analysis, and we're, we're looking at that now. And so are there problems here as well? Are there problems? It's not going to be like the Galway Cinema? Well, going we should very much hope not, and that's why And that's why we have actually gone back to them to say, uh, the, you know, we need more work on the cost-benefit analysis. So, so that's why the fund is not being held. It's being held. Is that funding guaranteed? It, this is, I, I, would, I would think it's not a holdback. I think this is the norm in projects, actually. There's always a toing and froing. You know, to make sure that we comply with the public spending. We well, were talking about 2015, this is 2018. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's three years of a difference in f yeah. funding. Uh, there must be a reason for that. Well, the, the reason being that the, 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 the developer came back to Cork City Council, who in turn came back to the department saying that, that actually it's going to cost more than they anticipated, they need more funding. So we're liaising with Cork City Council to see. A, can we provide that more that funding? And B, is it in order to provide I'll that? I'll one more question. And is it in order to provide that funding? Back in again, can I forget the opportunity? We'll get to that in a second, yeah, yeah but if you're finished. Yeah, that's okay. And, yeah. and it's, it's all about complying with the code, actually. And making sure we don't repeat the service experience. Okay, thank you for that.